let's now come to the species transport equation so we need the full and steady form of the species transport equation right to understand how a plug of solute gets transported in space and time and of course we are working in cylindrical coordinates given our pipe geometry Right, so, in this geometry, we can write the equation as follows. U is the unique velocity component here, the velocity in the axial direction. So, to fix a coordinate system, this is the r direction and normally I would take this to be z, but today let's take it as, as x. Right? So, it's uh, u dou c by dou x is equal to the diffusivity times those sorry so we are working in cylindrical coordinates so 1 by r dou by dou r of r dou c by dou r plus dou square c by dou x squared all right so this is the species transport uh, equation uh, quite standard uh, now, now let's, let's proceed, proceed to scale. scale. Right, so, so for, for the concentration, concentration we can use the uh, initial concentration, let's say, of this plug. Uh, so let's say it has a concentration, concentration C naught. Or uh, yeah, yeah, one could even take the, uh, I mean the mean, con the mean initial, initial mean concentration across the radius. radius. In either, either case, so the concentration, concentration is non-dimensionalized with some suitable characteristic concentration. concentration. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it cancels out from the equation throughout. Um, the, the velocity scale, as we know, is already uc given above here. We shall use the same scale here. And uh, more importantly, we shall scale x with the length of the tube l. Right, so l is the length of this tube. And uh, of, of course, the R characteristic, characteristic as I said, said before, is the radius of the tube. So, so under this scaling, uh, of course, I have to choose the time scale. So I'm going to take the uh, long time scale. Since you're interested in the evolution of the concentration as it moves along the length of tube L, so therefore the time scale of interest is going to be the convective, the time it takes to convect this uh, material out of the tube. So it's just uh, L by U characteristic. Right, the convective uh, time scale. Uh, remember that uh, this is what we're going to take to be the characteristic time scale. Remember, you also have a diffusive uh, time scale. Right, related in this uh, in this equation, which is given simply by r square over d. Right, this is the time it takes for uh, the concentration to diffuse radially, whereas this is the time it takes for the concentration to be convected. So. Uh, we expect this time scale to be much smaller than this because r is supposed to be much smaller than l and we shall see that appearing as we scale the problem okay so uh, as we scale the problem i'm going to so initially these variables should all be uh, dimensional right uh, after i scale them so let me just put the stars here so these are all dimensional quantities. Right, and after scaling, so from here the concentration scale, as I said, cancels out. Uh, this t in the denominator will give me a uc by l in the numerator. Similarly, I'm going to get a uc by l coming out here. So I multiply throughout, I'll get dl by u characteristic or if I, yeah, so let, let me just write it out uh, properly. So both terms give me a uc over l. I get a d by r square here. And if I want to take out R square common, I should uh, 
uh, multiply and divide by r square so i get r square over l squared times dou c by dou x c, dou square c by dou x square okay and uh, now i can take this to the other side it's because remember the primary process the fastest process in this problem is the uh, radial diffusion so this terms we multiplied by 1 therefore i divide throughout by this uh, uh, d by r square or multiply by r square by d so that gives me uh, a use c r square by d right here times all these terms is equal to 1 by r plus sort of aspect ratio okay that looks good so now for some simplification okay, this is where we use uh, uh, basically our knowledge about the problem to make some simplifying statements that will allow us to begin our uh, perturbative treatment of this problem so remember the key idea is that there has to be a there is a length scale separation between r and l or in other words uh, radial diffusion is much faster than axial convection oh, i forgot an l here yes yes so that uh, competition between the radial and axial time scales uh, is basically sitting here in this term. So if you look at it more carefully, so you have uh, UC R squared by LD, which we shall call small p, can actually be written as uh, R squared by D upon L by UC, right? which is actually the ratio of the diffusive time scale to the convective time scale or the characteristic time of our problem which we know is much much less than one and so the basic idea here is that this number p right is a small number much less than one in addition we know r is much less than l so therefore this aspect ratio is also much less than one okay so uh, we're basically going to drop r square by l square terms Right, because we think r is much less than l so this is actually a lower order term uh, than what we have here which has just one ratio of r by l right because uh, you see r by d uh, we expect to be order one that's the radial peclé number uh, whereas r by l is what makes a small p small okay so to be more formal p is also the peclé number based on the radial direction which is just uc r by l in uc r by d sorry into r by l and so this number is small because r by l is small and uh, because r by l is small we are just going to drop off this term entirely okay so our simplified equation now is going to look as follows Pe the small peclé number or the tube length based uh, peclé number Okay, so this is the simplified uh, equation that we are going to work with, which describes uh, the competition between radial diffusion and axial convection in a narrow long tube, uh, the transient uh, transport. So now even after the simplification, the equation is still quite complex. It's a partial differential equation in R, X and time. And uh, I mean, Solving this is, even though it's possible for a linear, such a linear equation, uh, it doesn't really give us uh, 
any immediate insight into laminar dispersion. Uh, what we really want for laminar dispersion is if we could somehow obtain an equation for the average concentration directly and understand or for the standard deviation or the spread or understand how the average concentration, radially average concentration is transported in X and time. Uh, this is the motivation behind uh, RS using the method of moments. But here we shall use a perturbative type uh, style treatment uh, using the fact that the parameter P is small. So before we come down to uh, what basically the method of averaging, it's useful to just treat this problem naively as a normal perturbation problem. And let's see why there is a need for a new technique, which I've been calling the method of averaging. Sorry about that, this white board sometimes uh, behaves a little funny. Yes, there you go. Um, okay, I think, uh, yes, now having cleared some real estate, let's get on uh, with the initially naive perturbation uh, treatment. So this is just a test if we had approached this problem uh, like any other problem we have dealt with in our course we say that p is much smaller than one so we assume uh, the concentration is c0 plus p c1 plus high order terms right and we substitute in one and we look at the equation for c0 so at order one what do we get? Well, the p terms drop off entirely and I see 1 by r equal to 0. Okay, now I need the boundary conditions which I had forgotten to mention earlier. So, let's just do that quickly. Uh, they are uh, immediately obvious. So, the boundary conditions we have are quite simple. Uh, we just, because we now have dropped off axial, sorry, axial diffusion we just need uh, one initial condition, we need an initial condition in time and we need uh, conditions in the radial direction as well as in general uh, we would need a condition on x or an inlet condition here. Uh, but for now in the treatment of the problem let me just write down uh, the radial direction boundary conditions and then as we proceed, we will consider what are the appropriate conditions to put uh, on the initial condition in time. So, in the radial direction, we have uh, that C must be bounded at the center line at r equal to 0 and at r equal to 1, which is the outer wall, we have a no flux condition. Right? So, the same boundary conditions are applied here. at r equal to 1 and c is bounded at r equal to 0. So now if we look at these boundary conditions and we solve this equation, right, we will see that the only solution to this, uh, we will see that we actually cannot get a unique solution uh, to this problem. So to see that, let us proceed, you take r to the other side, it drops off, you do one integral, you will get dou c by dou r. is a constant is let us say a divided by r. You do a second integration, you will get c is equal to a log r plus b. But now this must go to 0 because of our bounded condition and then we are left with c equal to b. But then if I apply uh, the second boundary condition, we will get uh, dou c by dou r at 1 is automatically 0 right? for all b. Therefore, the solution I have for c0, I am sorry, this should be c0. Right? The solution I have for c0, the c0 is some constant, right? it is arbitrary. So, you see that now I have a non-unique solution at the 
zeroth order. So now this is mathematically this is the consequence of the fact that the operator we have here with these no flux uh, boundary conditions is uh, really it has a null space uh, which in other words means it has a zero eigenvalue or, or basically it means that we cannot uh, obtain a unique solution to this problem. Uh, physically it's just telling us that uh, this problem with no flux boundaries in the limit of extremely rapid diffusion which is the zeroth order uh, I mean the order one problem for small peclet uh, basically means that in that limit of rapid diffusion when you don't have reaction or you don't have uh, a fixed concentration at the wall is just going to uniformize the concentration uh, but it, that limit cannot uh, by itself tell us what that concentration is going to be so uh, this is a constant uh, normal feature of all these diffusion dominated problems with no flux boundary conditions uh, where at leading order uh, all the problem is able to tell you uh, is that the concentration must be uniform across the cross section uh, but how that concentration evolves does not appear at leading order in the dynamics you actually have to uh, use information from uh, the most slowly varying processes like in this case uh, uh, convective transport to be able to determine how that uh, approximately uniform concentration varies in space and time. Uh, so to understand to obtain that we cannot use as you see here a regular a normal perturbation method because at the leading order we are unable to obtain a unique solution uh, although we cannot do that the fact that you do get this uh, kind of non-unique arbitrary constant as a solution is actually indicative uh, of the fact that we should use a different method which is called the method of averaging uh, which has been developed by different people introduced in different problems at different times but today we shall follow what has been uh, developed by the group of Balagotai. So this now brings us to the method of averaging. So I shall take you through this method today in an intuitive fashion, uh, although I shall make the steps clear. Uh, the underpinnings of this method is uh, really in the Lyapunov-Schmidt Schmidt reduction technique right which is a rigorous mathematical technique uh, in the context of finite dimensional linear algebraic systems but which can be applied to infinite dimensional PDE type problems as we do here but we won't go into the detailed maths underlying this method I will just show you the technique and motivate it uh, as much as I can as a method and uh, really that's sufficient for these problems although for dealing with complications it helps to look back at this theory but the important point is you will know of uh, I mean you know that such a theory exists that it is based on some uh, rigorous maths uh, but for our context of our uh, course uh, it's sufficient that we understand the basic ideas and then how to use it and what its, uh, what its implications are and how it can help us learn more about the problem. So the first step uh, is motivated actually by our zeroth order solution uh, obtained above. Uh, what this solution tells us is that the leading order behavior is actually just a concentration, just a uniform radial concentration. Or in other words, if you were to measure uh, the concentration, quantitatively, uh, the most dominant contribution would be uh, just a uniform flow, a uniform concentration in the radial direction and only variations in x and time. And radial variations in the concentration would only appear as a small correction uh, at best at order p. So this suggests uh, a decomposition of the concentration field into a part that does not vary in R and a correction, a smaller correction that varies, uh, that does vary with R or which captures, captures radial variation. So the first stage is to write the concentration C which is a function of R, X and T as its cross-sectional average part which is only a function of X and T plus a correction which I am going to call C prime or uh, let's use a different notation c tilde which is the function of r x and t right and we expect this 
to be of order p and smaller right and we this is going to be the order one uh, contribution so the first step in any method of averaging is such a decomposition right into the leading behavior which is the uh, how the cross section average varies in the uh, axial direction and in time and then the corrections which account for uh, smaller variations along the r direction you can also see this as a separation of the uh, two processes uh, so this first leading contribution accounts for uh, variations the slow variations in the axial direction and along with time and this accounts for more rapid radial variations the reason this c tilde is expected to change more rapidly than the c mean is because this uh, c tilde is involves variations in r which as we know will be smeared out rapidly by radial diffusion uh, that's in fact what this uh, first solution c not equal to constant basically says so in fact because uh, uh, the fastest process just leads is just diffusion which leads to a constant radial profile the variation of that constant uh, with time and space cannot be captured at leading order simply because uh, that variation is entirely determined by slower processes so we need to go to the higher orders and we can't do that in a usual perturbative fashion because we can't get a well defined solution at leading order and that's where the method of averaging comes in as we shall see but the first step is certainly motivated by a naive uh, perturbative treatment uh, in the sense that we have done a decomposition here in the following manner uh, this is not very different from what we had done here except to obtain the equation for c not we don't use the leading order uh, part of equation 1 rather we shall derive separately an equation for uh, c average uh, which is a step 2 of the method of averaging but before we do that we should recognize an important property of this decomposition which is that the mean value of c tilde which is nothing but uh, two times two coming from the denominator factor 0 to 1 r c tilde dr is zero why by very by its very definition because c tilde represents the deviations from the cross section average so therefore the averages of the deviations uh, themselves must be zero and you can prove it very simply by if you were to substitute uh, <coughs> from this formula in there so if you write c tilde as c minus c mean as substituted in here you will get this answer so this is not a this is the definition right the decomposition and this is just a property of this definition but it's going to be useful uh, it in fact this is what's going to help us to identify c tilde in a perturbative manner uh, where we couldn't directly identify c perturbatively okay so uh, let's now move ahead uh, with the method of averaging so let's now go to step 2 step 2 is obtaining an equation so obtain an equation for the average part as a function of x and time right so to do this we just integrate over equation 1 so equation 1 defines the concentration everywhere we want an equation for only the average concentration so we take the average of the entire equation so we go to equation 1 uh, multiply by r and integrate with dr right from 0 to 1 and doing that uh, will give us the following so if we treat first uh, the left hand side right this multiplied by r dr uh, times 2 of course what this this so this is the left hand side term what this gives us is uh, so let me write that here left hand side or is it right hand side uh, in my equation sorry it is the right hand side so let's this is the right hand side okay so the r cancels out from here that's not coincidence of course the uh, 1 by r is like a weight in this operator which goes well with the definition of the average 
uh, mathematically it's part of the uh, nature of the inner product so what we're really doing is just taking an inner product uh, of the equation with uh, with one so in the lyapunov schmidt procedure averaging out this equation is equivalent to taking an inner product of the equation with this uh, initial mode which is this constant mode uh, of the problem okay so let's just do this operation which we can think of as averaging the equation so we see we, the r's cancel so now i can integrate out the first derivative right that just leaves me with r do c by do r right uh, evaluated at 0 and 1 two times but after i apply the limits the lower limit goes to 0 uh, because r is 0 and do c by do r at 1 is uh, also 0 so this is basically equal to 0 after applying applying the boundary conditions i right, so the upper limit is 0 because of no flux the lower limit goes to 0 because of this r term so basically my entire right hand side involving the diffusion term uh, falls out of the equation when i take the average and now if i come to the left hand side So here uh, I have the Pecté number sitting outside and then I integrate across these two terms. So the integral can just be taken into the time derivative here, uh, right? So I'll directly get the, cup, the uh, cross section average term here. So I'll have Pecté number times rho rho t of the cross section average, right? Because the averaging operator can be taken into the time derivative plus 2 times integral 0 to r, r u rho c by rho x. Okay, now let's look at this term. Uh, I would like to somehow get this term written in terms of the cross section average, but it seems unlikely because you see I have u varying as a function of r as well. So I, it will be difficult for me to take this integral and apply it only on C. However, some simplification is possible. Uh, so I can take u inside the time derivative. So at the very least, I can remove the derivative in x out of the integral and then see what the remaining integral looks like. Right, so I can write this term as uh, 2 times 0 to r, r rho by rho x of uc allowing me to take d by dx out in the next step minus uh, you perform the chain rule right but dou u by dou x we know is 0 so this term basically goes to 0 right so what I have then is just p plus uh, of 2 times right okay so now what is this quantity this quantity actually looks familiar or may look familiar to you this is actually the cup mixing average Right. What does it mean? So, uh, it is the average not of C, that is the cross section average. It is, it is in some sense the average of the material transported through a given cross section. Uh, you can also think of it as if you had to cut off the pipe at some distance uh, x, uh, collect the material that comes out of that pipe in a short uh, interval of time, mix it together and then uh, measure the concentration this is exactly the concentration you will get uh, so that's why it's known as the cup mixing average in fact uh, this is the in some sense mean average that you can actually measure at the outlet of a pipe if you collect the fluid leaving uh, let's say the tubular pipe at different instances of time 
So you collect the fluid at an instant of time uh, that comes out per unit time. Right, that's why UC is basically a flux. So it tells me the the flux leaving the pipe at a given instant of time. So you can collect that volume of material, right? And then you can, uh, if you mix it together and measure the uh, uniform concentration that results, this is what you're going to get. So it's not the cross section average, but the uh, cross section average weighted by the local convective uh, flux, if you like, or the local uh, fluid velocity. So I'm going to call this average CM as opposed to uh, the C with angular brackets, which is the cross section average. If I do that, then my final equation for the average concentration can be written in terms of these two averages as uh, the time rate of change of the cross section average plus the axial variation of the cup mixing average is equal to zero. Okay, so let me call this now. Uh, where am I? My equation naming? Yes, this should be two. Right, this is a decomposition. Uh, one was the original equation. Uh, two is the decomposition uh, in terms of the average and the fluctuation, the small fluctuation. And three is the equation for the average, which we have obtained not entirely in terms of the average. Right. So if we had at this stage we were able to get an equation directly for the average, then that's the end of the story. We have a simplified equation for how the average concentration behaves. Uh, but we are unable to do that. Why? Precisely because u depends on r. You see, suppose u was a constant. If u was just u naught or u was just uh, a plug profile, right? as we would have, let's say, in a true plug flow reactor, then I could take the constant u out and I would be left with the average concentration. So in a plug flow, right? let me just write this here, in a plug flow reactor where u is constant uh, equal to u naught let's say I would have the same equation as right and this in fact is if you look at it closely the equation appropriate for a plug flow reactor because if I had a reaction term I would have r of the I mean the reactivity uh, on the right hand side and under steady conditions I would lose this term and the remaining thing would be exactly the equation for a uh, plug flow reactor. So uh, if you do have a plug flow or in other words if there is no uh, if the, the concentration profile is uniform or there is no variation in the con in the sorry if the velocity profile is uniform or that if there is no radial variation in the velocity then I di directly get an equation for the cross section average uh, at this stage itself. And I have no need to worry about uh, equation 2 or in variations about the average. However, you see that if the velocity does vary in the radial direction as it does in a laminar tube, a laminar flow in a tube, then at this stage I cannot obtain a closed equation for the cross section average. Rather, if, I'm, if I have to solve this equation, I need to have a relationship between the cup mixing and the cross section averages. And the deviation in the two is entirely due to the non-uniform uh, radial velocity profile uh, and that is where we are starting to see now the physics of the problem coming in. So already we know that uh, a key aspect to this problem uh, to it not to the concentration not simply moving like a plug uh, or the slug not simply moving with the uh, kind of average concentration is uh, or what you would consider to be the un con uniform concentration uniform velocity is uh, because you have a radial variation in the velocity profile.